Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be watching something extraordinary, which you might have already figured out by the title of this video. How to Get Ahead in Advertising is a British black comedy movie, which was released back in 1989. Now, let's start this. The movie is about Dennis Bagley, an advertising executive who takes his job rather too seriously. You give the guy anything, and he will sell it to anyone. Give him a bald head, and he'll sell a shampoo, or at least, that's what he claims to be capable of doing. But most recently, he has been struck with a creative block as he's coming short on ideas to sell a pimple cream. In front of his colleagues, Bagley acts like everything is under control, and he's just outlining some of the details for the ad to sell the cream. But on the inside, he's worried. He's running out of ideas, and to be fair, selling a pimple cream which he knows isn't going to work is a tough job. He tries to compose himself and acts out possible advertisement ideas. He reads how the cream has essential vitamins, oils from marigold seeds, and everything that Mother Nature has to offer to cure the filthy pimple. But he knows it's all stupid, and no one will ever buy the idea. He even pretends to be a pretty biochemist, trying to detail everything that's good about the cream. But yet again Bagley isn't convinced by this. This pimple cream has really gotten over his head. So much so he cannot even focus during a lunch out with his wife, Julia. His wife advises him to not overthink and take it casually. But Bagley is still fixated on how he's going to sell the damn pimple cream. Julia asks if the cream works, and to that Bagley replies that the product is junk. There you go. Julia says that's the problem. If he knew that the cream worked, he wouldn't have to come up with lies to sell it. But Bagley replies he isn't in the business of selling products that work. He's in the business of selling hopes that a product will. That's advertisement 101 for Julia. Bagley's so caught up in this pimple cream that he can't keep his voice down and lets everyone in the restaurant know his frustration. Anyway, the lunch ends and Bagley goes to his office, only to see a woman with a huge pimple on her nose. Pimples, pimples everywhere. Bagley is going to get crazy. He's then called by his boss, John Bristol, who asks him where the pimple cream is going. John Bristol then warns that the pimple company is threatening to pull out if nothing is shown to them soon. Bagley puts on his confident look and lies that he's just touching up on the idea and will get everything ready by the weekend. On his way home, Bagley's mind is still consumed by pimples. No matter what he does, he simply cannot stop himself from thinking about pimples. On a train, he comes across some old men reading newspapers and talking about a recent drug bust up. Bagley calls them out for believing everything that's written on the paper. The old men argue since it's written on the paper it must be true. But Bagley begs to differ as he makes it clear that not everything they read or see is the truth. He makes his point by revealing how one of his advertisements blatantly lied about fixing a certain problem. But guess what? Everyone believed it and bought the product. He lets out all of his frustration kits on their faces. The old men are left so uncomfortable that they decide to get out of the train, but Bagley doesn't leave them alone before letting them know how stupid people are. At night, Julia has invited some friends over for a dinner party. Bagley is still frustrated because of the pimple cream, and he yet again lets his frustration out on someone else. This time, he picks on Julia's fish eating big and friend Penny. The two have a back and forth, and since Bagley isn't one to back down, the dinner party abruptly ends with Penny leaving. Then, Bagley has a moment of clarity. He tells his friend that he has come to his senses and realized that advertisement is a big lie, and he'll no longer indulge in it. Bagley declares himself to be done with the world of advertising. Next morning, Julia enters the kitchen to find Bagley making a complete mess. Bagley explains that he's going through a process of natural selection. He's going through everything in the house and disposing of every item that has no worth or has advertisements on them. So Bagley is staying true to what he said last night, but he seems to have really lost his mind and is acting all crazy. Julia finally shouts at him and tells him that he's just exhausted because of the pimple cream. In fact, Bagley's mind has been so much affected by that pimple cream that he himself has grown one on his neck. Despite the pimple pain on his neck, Bagley goes to his boss' office to hand in his resignation. Bagley makes it clear that he's done with advertisements and will not spend the rest of his life spreading lies. But John Bristol simply tells him to rest and calls it a phase which he himself had gone through at one point in his career. However, Bagley doesn't want to get talked into not quitting and leaves the office. At night, Bagley is really concerned about how fast the pimple is growing. Seeing him all frustrated, Julia tries to calm him down. 
but Bagley isn't one to listen, if you haven't figured that out yet. Next morning, he wakes up to find a face growing out of his pimple, a face which has one eye so far and can even talk. Bagley understandably gets shocked and comes down running. He starts running around to try and get rid of the face that's on his neck. Julia immediately phones a doctor to come and see him. Bagley asks Julia to see the face that is on his pimple, but it's only visible to Bagley and no one else. Julia calms him down by saying he's physically and mentally exhausted because he has been thinking of the ridiculous pimple cream all week. The doctor later arrives and says it's a normal pimple and Bagley is just imagining things because of exhaustion. He assures Julia that there's nothing wrong to worry about and everything will be back to normal after Bagley gets a good rest. The doctor has taped up the pimple and Julia gives some medicine to calm his mind. But despite the pimple not being visible, Bagley can still hear it talk, and so can Julia apparently. When the pimple answers all the questions, Julia simply takes it as Bagley conversing with her. Bagley tries to ignore it as he doesn't want to believe that the pimple on his neck is talking. But the pimple continues talking and insults Julia while Bagley's face is under the table. So finally Bagley has to tell Julia that it was not him, but the pimple. Julia obviously doesn't believe Bagley and the couple end up having an argument. Since his wife won't believe him and the cruel pimple won't make itself visible to others, Bagley takes a rather creative approach. He puts a carton box over his head, separating himself from the pimple. Bagley believes that with the box separating them, he can talk without disturbing the pimple which is sleeping. Bagley has set up a camera in front of him and is talking to it. He's recording it in case something happens to him. He warns Julia that the world is in danger and greed is taking over. Just then, the pimple wakes up and starts talking to Bagley. It seems like the carton box didn't work at all. Bagley tries to warn that advertisements will be the end of the world, but the pimple keeps interrupting him. To get silent, the pimple demands a cigarette which Bagley goes out to get. His weird behavior has managed to confuse the housemaid. However, Julia is acting like everything is normal to not let Bagley fall deeper into his illusion or madness. Bagley is smart and knows that Julia is ignoring the carton box on his head. He promises Julia when the right time comes she'll exactly understand why he's been acting that way. With that, Bagley goes back to give the cigarette to his pimple, which isn't shown in the movie as I believe it would have taken the movie out of budget. Bagley then goes to meet his boss and tells him about the pimple on his neck that can speak. All of a sudden, John Bristol starts to act like a therapist and asks Bagley why exactly he wants to quit the world of advertising. Bagley replies that advertising conspires to the big brother, the eye that watches all. Moreover, advertising is everything that is wrong with the world. People are cutting down trees so they can accommodate space for restaurants and more parking space. People have become so greedy that they don't care about the truth anymore. Bagley is sure that he wants nothing to do anymore with advertising. Just then, his pimple starts to talk and much like Julia. John Bristol believes that it's Bagley who's doing the talking. Bagley is really worried, so his boss suggests that they take a look at the pimple, which as per Bagley has a face and can speak. Upon removing the bandage, Bagley sees that the face on the pimple is much more visible and has grown more out of his neck. Plus, it also has a mustache and kind of looks like himself. His boss, on the other hand, does not see anything. Bagley faints due to the sight and is hospitalized where the doctors will remove the pimple. But even at the hospital, the pimple doesn't stop talking. And moreover, it now starts to take control of Bagley's hands and be prepared for what's coming next. The pimple or the face that's on Bagley's neck starts to grow at a massive speed. It fully comes out of the bandage and then starts to cover Bagley's face with it. Soon Bagley's entire face is covered, and what's left on top of his neck is the evil pimple that has fully grown. Weirdly enough, it looks exactly like Bagley, but there's a mustache. The pimple then tells Bagley that it will be him that'll get chopped off in the operation room. With everything that has happened, the nurse doesn't notice the mustache or even the fact that the pimple has moved on to the other side. And then sadly the doctor operates and removes Bagley's face thinking of it as a pimple. With the operation successful, the pimple has taken over Bagley's body and existence, and unlike Bagley, it is greedy and will go to any lengths to advertise and make money out of it. It goes to the important meeting where the pimple cream company representatives are hoping to hear a pitch. The evil Bagley then gives them a very interesting idea. Instead of making people feel disgusted by pimples, Bagley wants to glamorize it. He wants everyone to feel comfortable about their pimples, and then they'll shamelessly start buying the cream. 
He then shoots the pimple cream advertisement, where a popular rock singer with many pimples on her face is confidently singing a rock song. Everyone loves the ad, and Evil Bagley returns back home to Julia, who also fails to notice the mustache on his face. And this Bagley is really excited to be with Julia, if you know what I mean. Next night, they are preparing a party for their marriage anniversary. Julia has invited her friend Penny who was insulted by Bagley a few days back. In their private conversation, Julia confides to Penny that Bagley has been acting weird ever since getting the pimple removed. She says that Bagley has been overly eager to have sex with her. He wants sex every time of the day and night. And it's not just Julia who's letting the secrets out. It turns out that Bagley is still barely alive. He begs the evil Bagley to let him speak to Julia for the one last time, but the evil Bagley isn't going to let that happen. After not letting Bagley talk to his wife, the evil Bagley adds salt to the wound and tells Bagley that he is going to have sex with his wife at exactly 1 a.m. As poor Bagley desperately begs to have his life ended, the evil Bagley says that he's going to give Julia a baby boy. The party begins and there are lots of guests, including Bagley's boss John Bristol. As the evil one is having a nice conversation with everyone, Bagley takes a trick out of his book and starts to talk. He insults John Bristol, and everyone believes that it was the evil Bagley who did so. To save himself from further embarrassment, the evil Bagley excuses himself and goes into the bathroom. Bagley once again begs to have his life ended, but the evil Bagley says, not before 1 a.m., and proceeds to superglue Bagley's mouth shut so that he won't cause any more problems. Why didn't Bagley think of this? If he had superglued the pimple's mouth shut, you wouldn't be in this condition now, would he? Say whatever you want, but the evil Bagley is smart. So with Bagley taken care of, the evil one rejoins the party and starts to dance with a woman named Monica. And ironically, the superglue didn't work as advertised and Bagley starts to talk to the woman, believing her to be Julia. He mistakenly warns Monica instead of Julia and asks her to prepare a condom before 1 a.m. As you'd expect, Monica backs off from the evil Bagley and goes out of the party, while the evil Bagley starts punching the real one for opening his mouth. Julia starts to figure something is definitely wrong. The party then ends, and look, it's already past 1 a.m. Julia is still awake, and she attempts to talk to the real Bagley, while the evil one is asleep. When the evil Bagley turns and makes it hard for Julia to talk to the real Bagley, she uses a vacuum cleaner tube, which surprisingly works and Bagley tells her to see the video he recorded. Julia finds the tape and plays it to see the video which Bagley had recorded when the pimple was talking to him. As the part where the pimple starts talking comes close, the evil Bagley enters the room and starts talking over the video to not let Julia hear anything. Julia is really confused about how he's having a conversation with the recorded footage. The evil Bagley replies that it's because he recorded the video and he knows what he's going to speak next. He says that he was really frustrated because of the pimple cream and he started to have nightmares about having a pimple that could speak. Even if Julia believes this story, she's just too creeped out by the evil Bagley and then leaves him. The real Bagley tells the evil one that even if he lost control over his own body, he still managed to get Julia free. But the evil Bagley, as he's riding out on a horse, says that it's him who gets the last laugh as the world will continue getting lied to by the countless advertisements from the countless products that will slowly and eventually consume the whole world. The evil Bagley seems really excited about how the world is going to become and what part he'll play in it. That's the end of the movie, and that was something else. Thank you if you're still watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and I suggest you watch the movie too. And please make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos.